Here we go. All right. What we are going to work on this afternoon um, for, for the next hour, we're going to hit business planning. And um, we're going to use some of the tools that Remax has established to help us do that. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I threw the handout por portion of it in the chat for you. And what I'd like to do is start with that, actually, if we could. What, the one that's in the chat is fillable. So uh, when you get a chance, you can take a look at it. But what I'm going to do right quick is I'm going to share my screen with you. And we'll kind of walk through it so we can take a look at it. All right. First off, <clears throat> when we talk about business planning, before we do that, when we talk about business planning, um, a lot of people come into this business thinking they're just going to go help somebody buy or sell real estate. Uh, but it's it, it's a business and you need to treat it like one, number one. Number two, you are the one in charge, nobody else, right? So, uh, I and I share that with you because over the years, I've worked with agents who have said things like, well, it's the broker's job to make my phone ring. It's not, it's your job to make your phone ring. Uh, they'll say things like, I don't feel comfortable talking to my friends about real estate. Well, if you don't feel talk comfortable talking to your friends, what's the odds of you talking to a stranger uh, about real estate, right? So we, we need to work on some of that. If you have any of those issues, not necessarily right this minute, but talk to me about it. Let's see if we can't work through this. Um, the other thing is a lot of times people will say, I don't like to be considered a salesperson. And when you got a real estate license, it's a salesperson's license, right? So we, you're in, you are in sales, so you're in that sales business. And we want to continue to work with that as we grow. Uh, as I go through this, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask because you know, the only stupid question is the one you leave here with, right? And we'll just work with that, right? We want to make sure that we do what we can to fix it. <clears throat> and so when it comes to business planning, some of the people that, um, if you're in the mission office, you talk to some of the agents, they might tell you, I get a little carried away with it. That's probably true. Um, I've been in sales since the 80s, since the early 80s, and planning, goal setting, all of that was a big part of what we used to do. And I was extremely successful in that business. And I took what I had from there and brought it over to real estate, which worked out really well. So what we're covering today is kind of sort of my niche, if you will. Um, but it's not, it's not that way for everybody, unfortunately. So, and that's, that's okay. We can work with that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this with you and let's see if we can make this work this way. Once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and we'll see what we can do to get those answered for you. The package you have, and again, it's in the chat as well. Um, so you have access to it. I would, Highly recommend you download it either right now or before the class is over with. But it, it's Momentum is the Remax package. It's um, uh, Remax puts it together. The brokers, like in Norma's case, for example, she had to buy the package to be able to share with the agents. But it comes from, from Remax and it has a lot of really good information in it. So when we do our normal company training, a lot of times we'll tie in with Momentum. And some of the new agent training ties in with momentum as well. So when we start off, we talk about your business plan. How many of you have owned a business before? Okay, so Jessica, what, if you don't mind, what kind of business did you have? I used to have a beachwear store in Tulum. A beach what? Beachwear store. Beachwear, okay. Yeah. All right. And where are you located at? In Tulum. Tulum. Quintana Roo, oh, Cancun. Okay. Yes, yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right. 
I had it for almost three years until COVID happened. Yeah. And that's one of the other things, um, as we go through some of this, you'll hear me just like this morning, we were talking about, uh, and Nina was in there as well with it, uh, talking about people talking about the market changing and all this stuff. We watch all of that so that we can stay abreast on what's going on and help <clears throat> give you information so you can adjust your business, right? Uh, it's a, it's, we're all in this together. And, um, I've been doing this since 97. I've been in real estate since 97 and um, had the opportunity to be the top agent in the Rio Grande Valley for uh, a franchise. Had five different offices, not five different companies. And I had the number one position based on units sold, right? Not money. Did not get rich and famous. It was based on units sold. And I did that for a couple of years and I took over training and management. And then my wife, I handed everything over to my wife. So she took off with it and actually beat my record. But uh, that's another story. But anyway, um, so when we talk about some of this, it's, it's because I believe it's real important for you to do some of this. I, I really do. And if, and you'll be able to tell when I don't, or I'll tell you, I don't, you know, I can see it working, but I've never done it or so. I'll tell you that. I'm be completely honest about it. Um, as we work on this, if you have any questions, please ask. A business plan needs to be there. You may it may not be different. And the reason I ask whether you've had another business or not, it may be a little different than what you've ever done before. But every business should have some kind of a plan. And that plan is going to have what their goals are, where they want to go, their vision, their mission statement, what are they trying to achieve? All, of, all that's going to be in there, Right. This doesn't get into that aspect of it. It's more based on the financial side of things. And I'll, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We, uh, the one I use personally and have used for years uh, prior to coming to Remax is a combination of this plus uh, some additional items. This setup is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I've said it before, coming to Remax when I seen this, it was like, holy cow, this is exactly what I've been looking for to add to the system I had. When you look at the business plan, um, your life aspiration, aspirations is a part of it. What do you want to do? What, do you, what is your goal? Why did you get into real estate? Why in the world would you want to be in real estate? Right? Um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, but there's going to be times where you're going to wake up in the morning and go, man, why did I make this decision? Right? But that's part of it. It's okay. If you have a business plan, you'll be able to get out of that rut and get things going. If you have things together, there's going to be ups and downs. You're in sales, right? So it's going to go be up and down. What we want to do is make it instead of being like up and down, we want to make just a little, it's okay, right? Make it work. Make it as smooth as possible, but it'll never be completely smooth. That's just lying, right? When you, when you start off, uh, again, this ties in the financial side. We're talking about your expenses. You need to know how much money you need to be able to live the next year, right? So that's going to be a focus. And I would actually take this and just work it between now and the end of the year. Because starting in October, you'll hear me start talking about planning out the next year. Every October, November, I start in October and I'll plan out next year. So when January the 1st comes, January 1st comes, I don't have to think about what's going on. I'm off and running, right? And I was, I was taught that years ago and that we, we've stayed with it. It works really well to have a basic plan. I'm not talking about the details, right? But have a basic plan to work from. So this works on the financial side of it. Determine what you need as far as your expenses, your aspirations, what do you want to achieve? Uh, what's it going to cost to achieve that? Put all of this together and then tie it in with... Um, the whole picture, if you will. So in the handout that you have, the one that I put in the chat, and if you can't see it, let me just um, throw that in there again for those that came in a little late. This handout is fillable. So like, for example, whatever your mortgage is, let's say you're $1,000 $1, a month, just as an example, you, you plug all of this in and then it'll, it'll total it up for you at the end, right? So you have all your expenses, and this is your personal expenses. <clears throat> and then you take your business expenses. 
And when we talk about business expenses, if you're not familiar with what is a business expense, um, I would highly recommend you talk to a CPA. In fact, when I used to do the pre-licensing courses, I always told the agents or the students, uh, you need two people in your corner starting this business. One of them is a really good CPA. The other one is a real estate attorney. And I don't necessarily have a real estate attorney, but I have a couple of real estate websites, real estate attorney websites that I go to where they have a ton of information. And I share those from time to time with people as well. Like Lone Star Law, Law is one of them. The, uh, anyway, so you put your business expenses in here. Know what, what, what are you gonna do as far as marketing goes? And marketing, by the way, is our biggest expense. Shauna, uh, do you have a moment to jump in? Shauna, are you there? There you go. Yes, sir. Do you have a minute to jump in? Sorry about that. It's okay. I didn't, sorry to bother you. The um, what, what do you what would you say is the biggest amount you've spent on marketing, just off the wall marketing? The largest amount. The largest amount I spend in marketing. Uh, right now I don't spend a whole lot because I'm part of a team. <laughs> but um, well, what did you see? What did, what did you see agents spending? In, in your previous uh... so I mean she's actually done a lot of marketing she has a billboard but then she also has um we're partnered with um a mortgage I mean, excuse me yeah a lender and he does a lot of our flyers for us but then what else um I'm trying to log into the... I don't know why. Amy's trying to log in right now so she can kind of help me out but it's not launching that <laughs> right. all right thanks ma'am Sorry about that. It's okay. Sorry. So when we're the reason for those of you that's that's fairly new at this, the reason we talk about the marketing and the expenses because uh, what I want you to know is that everybody outside of our company probably will tell you you're going to have to spend this to make that. You have to spend money to make money, and I will tell you not to do that. Please don't do that. Don't spend anything until you start making some money. There's so many free ways we can do this business to get it started, right? And you might have to spend a little bit, but the reason I'm telling you this is that nobody ever discussed that with me. Nobody ever talked to me about it. And um, I honestly, not once but twice, uh, ran up the credit cards to the max. Well, a max for me. <clears throat> At one point, I had over $70,000 on credit cards from marketing, from marketing, right? Do not do that. Do not do that. It's not worth it. I came from a background in the military, knew nothing about business. All I knew was I need to write contracts, write contracts. I can do that, right? Uh, prospecting, not a problem. Talking to people, not a problem, right? But all this other stuff, like some knucklehead called and said, hey, I understand you just got your real estate license. I got a heck of a deal for you on some pins. And I bought a case of stick pins, which I hate to begin with, but I bought them because it's going to make things look good. It's going to make things better. You're going to have something to give away. I threw away about half of those or better, right? And that's what I'm talking about. So don't go out and do that. When you look at marketing, use some common sense, talk to some of the other agents and see what they're doing. Um, that's like, like a class we had this morning on social media was so good. Uh, and I'll have that uploaded into YouTube later on, but that uh, use some common sense with it before you go out. Use some common sense before you go out and spend a whole bunch of money on it. In fact, one of the worst ones I'll share with you, Alejandro, I'll get you a second. One of the worst ones was in Austin, moved to Austin for a year, and I paid for a year's worth of advertising on the scoreboard thing at a bowling alley. At a bowling alley. And you know how many leads I got in a year? Zero. One of the worst ads I ever ran. 
but I can run an ad on Facebook Marketplace for free and get seven or eight leads. Alejandra, go ahead. Um, my question is, what is the, the amount that you say that it would be like an okay amount to spend on marketing? It, it's going to depend on what you want to do with it um, and how, how you're trying to do that. Uh, just like this morning, there was, there was uh, conversations about Facebook and uh, people using Instagram and different things. So you may not, you, you may not actually, you, you may not have to do a whole lot of spending if you'll use the sources you have. Like for okay. example, for example, our sphere of influence is the key. New agents should be sending out letters to people they know everybody you know in fact in pre-licensing that's one of the things i used to have them set up before your license comes in get this letter printed out hey guess what i just did i just joined xyz realty and if you ever had a real estate need in any of these areas i can help you that letter it's called a um well it's called new agent letter you can go to breakthroughbroker.com breakthroughbroker.com is a website you can go to and click on letters and it's there for you you can download it from there. That should go to everybody you know, everybody you know. And that's actually a system I learned back in 97. It's um, Carla Cross. One of the, there were two books I bought when I first started, Carla Cross, Up and Running, Making Money Your First Month in Real Estate was one of them. In that book, she talks about sending that letter out. And then three days later, you start making phone calls or door knocking to those individuals. Hey, Alejandro, I sent you a letter. This is, this is Mac. I sent you a letter uh, just calling to see if you got it. And it doesn't matter what they say. If they say no, well, the letter, what the letter was for is it's me announcing that I'm a real estate agent now, right? And I just, I'm just curious who you might know that I need to be talking to about real estate. And you just, you go through that until you've talked to everybody within your sphere and, and start building from there, right? That's where the majority of your business should come from is your sphere of influence. People that know you, like you, and trust you, they want to help you. They want to see you be successful, but we have to talk to them. We, let it, we, we don't need to try to sell them on real estate, but who do they know? Every time a friend of theirs says they want to sell a house or buy a house or do something in real estate, our name should be right there. And the only way it's going to be there is by us staying in touch with them. And that marketing is really cheap, really cheap. And we'll talk more about that later on when we get into the prospecting side of it. And that's and, and again, I share that with you because you don't need to spend all that money to start off with. So then you have your annual expenses in here. You can throw that in. And then we're talking about personal and business. You put them together. If, if you're in a situation where... Um, If, if you're in a situation where you have a, uh, a, a spouse, partner, whatever, that, that is providing uh, the household income, for example, because sometimes as an instructor with a pre-licensing, I'd have women come into the class who had been stay-at-home moms, for example, and never really did a, a lot of work. Um, when they were starting off, they don't, they don't have anything to work on on expenses because the husband was taking care of it, just as an example, right? That's fine. Leave that out then and just focus on the business expenses. Leave the personal out and just focus on the business side of it until you get things set up. But put this together so you have some numbers to work from. <clears throat> and then you go to the financial model here, your savings accounts, um, retirement, vacation, travel. And by the way, plan a vacation, plan a vacation. You need to get away about every three or four months, go do something different for a few days. Um, make it work for you, whatever that is, right? Don't get it. I don't do that myself anymore. I used to do it all the time. Every three months, I take a week off. But um, today, that just doesn't work. But we do take off. Like this past weekend, we took off, went to Royal City, went fishing. Not to not to catch fish, but just to chill out, right? And uh, do things like that. Get away for a little bit. You need that. The financial model. So you've got all this put together. Here's your expenses. Here's your aspirations. Here's your total net revenue. This is what I have to make. 
And this line right here, for those of you that's fairly new, if you have not read that, please read that. It is unacceptable for my business to profit less than this. That's the entrepreneur's mantra. If you ask Norma Hinojosa, what is the entrepreneur's mantra? She will tell you in a minute. Um, when I first started with the company and, and I was teaching one of the classes, I came across this and I'd never heard it before. But I figured these are REMAX agents in the mission office, right? It was just us at the time. I said, who can tell me what the entrepreneur's mantra is? And some of them just sat there and stared at me like, what are you talking about? Right? And Norma jumped in with it. That's it. And it makes so much sense when you think about it. It's unacceptable for my business to profit less than this. That's your focus. You talk about your drive, what's causing you to, to do what you do. That, that's a part of it. It's your business. Nobody else's. It's your building. So in the financial model, we took it to calculate the taxable income because we do have to pay taxes. <sighs> And um, that was the, that was the deep side. Um, it tells you how to figure that out here, right? And it uses, um, because you're self-employed, there's that self-employment tax is all in there and all that good stuff, right? Uh, even my CPA, when I started with him, uh, which I didn't have when I started, I didn't get him until about 2012, something like that, which is again, one of the reasons why I tell you, you need somebody. He said, always set aside 30% of everything you make. Set aside 30%. Is that what you're going to need? Probably not. But at least you'll know you're covered. And the other thing that I'd like to share with you that I was told it's incorrect, absolutely incorrect, is you have to pay quarterly taxes or you're supposed to, right? Quarterly taxes. You have a business. Quarterly taxes are due. And um, if you have an LLC, that's a whole different ballgame. But as an entrepreneur, you have quarterly taxes that are due for your business, and you should be paying those. Um, I was never told anything about that when I first started in 2001. Up in Austin, I was talking to the manager about it. He goes, oh, don't worry about it. Just pay it at the end of the year. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. If you have an outstanding year and you don't do this, where you set that money aside, you'll get, uh, you'll find out you have uh, uh, very little money left when it comes time to pay Uncle Sam, right? So you want to make sure that you have things together. Your operational model, right there, prospect, generate leads, convert those leads, take care of them, and put that back into the marketing side of it. it uh, it'll come full circle for you. You want to build a business that you can do something with. So Alejandro, for example, why are you in real estate? Why did you want to do this? If you don't mind. Who, me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, I've been wanting to do real estate for, for a while now, a couple of years. Um, I, I really enjoy it. I, um, I'm, a, I'm a people person, so I, I like uh, helping people out and you know, I've been in sales for a long time and I think um, I would really enjoy changing people's lives, you know, because that's what, what, what we're doing here, you know, finding their new home or a new place for, to, to, for their business or, you know, all of that. Um, I, I think it would be amazing for me to be part of that. Okay. Awesome. And when, you, when you're working on some of this, translate that into what's in it for them. How can you help them, right, so that, so that they have that? Uh, you said you've been in sales before. What did you do? Uh, I used to work for a, a, a magazine uh, selling ads. And I also worked for about five years at Aquatot Swim Schools. I was the regional manager there. So um, awesome. I would go to Corpus Christi, Bronzeville, Laredo, McAllen, and train the, the, um, the people there. Uh, and we would go to, to events and try to get clients and stuff like that. Great. That's a good deal. Love that. So that same thing works in this business, right? 
absolutely works in this business. Um, and you're, when you're looking at this, so you're putting all this together. Step six here is where we're calculating our transaction benchmarks. So you have your GCI is gross commission income, gross commission income. That's what's the total income we want coming in. What's the average? And it breaks it down into sales volume, right? So you divide it. You get the sales volume. The sales volume is the sold price. What was the sold price on that property? And then you do the average sales price. And that's how many transactions. So for me to make 142 in this example, 142,000, I'm going to need 13.6 transactions to be able to get that. When you know those numbers, it makes life so much easier because when things um, are going really good, in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm here, but what can I do here? And you keep, keep trying to move forward. When they're going bad, it's like, all right, it's just, a, it's just a part of it. Let me get back on track. Let me fix this. Let me do that. And then if you're in sales, most good salespeople use things like this to actually push them where they need to be. Uh, I've said before in previous trainings, I had a goal of five new listings every month, five new listings every month. And I set a goal of, of uh, hitting a certain transaction mark, like 36 transactions in a year, right? Or 32 transactions in a year. And once you get there, it's like, okay, now what do I do? I still got three months left, you know, you, and you just can't, you know, you're not going to quit. So you just keep going with it. Um, but this helps you see where you want to go. And if I need 13 transactions a month, I mean, I'm sorry, 13 transactions for the year. I'm sorry, 13 transactions for the year to get to this gross commission. That's about one transaction a month, correct? Is that hard to do? No, no, it's not. And there's some experienced individuals on here, but, um, and, and it's, I'm not telling you this as a, as a bragging type thing. I'm just telling you, cause I know it can be done. Real estate transactions are what you make them. There's an agent in mission right now who, uh, I wanna say three weeks ago, four weeks ago, she closed three, she had three closings in one month or in one week, right? which is pretty good. Um, set goals like that so you can see where you're at and what you're doing. The best we ever had was we had 17 closings. We, my wife and I had 17 closings in one month. And the best I ever had individually was I had 12 closings in one month. So just get that driving force, whatever it is you're looking for. And that's where this comes into play. If you'll take this form and fill it out and work it, all the formulas are here. All you have to do is plug in the basic, what do you want? What's your average commission? And that's gonna give you your total sales volume. Plug the sales volume in here. What's the average sales price? If you don't know the average sales price, ask the manager in that office or ask one of the agents what the average is around there. Corpus Christi is gonna be different than Mission or, or Harlingen or South Pottery Island. So let's find out what the average is. Let me know. You, what you need. And I'll see what I can pull up on RPR for, for example, and that'll give you your goals here. That's what we want to work off of. And then your operational model. <clears throat> so when we look at this um, on the seller side, for example, how much, how many listings do you want to get? What's going to be your focus? And there's going to be people tell you something different. I, I guarantee it. Maybe not within this company, but um as an agent starting out, you need to have a focus. You need to have a focus. Are you gonna work with buyers or are you gonna work with sellers? And the same thing I used to tell all the pre-licensing students, my recommendation would be make it buyers to get started because there's a lot of buyers out there and very few seasoned agents to work with them, right? Uh, as a seasoned agent, I would hand off a buyer in a minute because I, I, when I got up this morning, my day was planned. Buyer calls are sitting out in front of the house. I want to see this property. I'm, I don't have time to mess with it, but I'll hand it off to you to take care of it, right? 
And if you're using this system, like our our um, the Remax system, the Boosh system, for example, you'll get leads. I get um, probably on average, probably about four leads a, a week off of Booj. Some of those are rentals, rental properties, but still a lead. And somebody that's looking for a rental today will be looking for a home six months, a year, maybe two years down the road, right? So you, you want to nurture that. You want to work with it. Anyway, and that's what this is. So this one says 60% sellers, 40% buyers. Where do you want your focus to be? And as you're working on that, then the transactions required, we had that in this formula up here that we had. And then, so what do you need? I need eight sellers and I need five buyers, basically, to get where I need to, do, need to be. And if you work this out, it makes it a whole lot easier because you can see what you're, what you're doing. And um, this is another portion of it on this sheet here. When you take a look at it, it breaks it down by uh, what, you, what happened last year, what's happening this next year, what's your goals, right? You can do it there. You have the operational model. This one is really important because if you look at this, you have your um, listings sold, listings taken, meetings. Uh, it breaks it down for you so that you can actually see where, you're ne where you need to be and what you're working on. Um, as far as a, a basic benchmark goes for it on the operating model. If you have performance standards established, dials, talks, meetings, you'll learn what these are as you grow with them. And in other words, how many people, if you've been in sales before, you've seen this, you've done this, almost all salespeople do that. How many people do I need to, how many doors do I need to knock on to get somebody to say yes? How many People do I need to get into the open house to get somebody to say yes? How many in my sphere of influence do I need to talk to to be able to get that one referral from them, right? You monitor all those numbers so that you know what you need to do at any given time to, to pick things up. Just like I said, if the five listings, I need a five listings every month. If I'm around the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 18th, and I don't see that, I know I need to pick up the pace right? To make it happen. And then this is the listing conversion. And what this does is it it's the same type of thing that we're talking about up here, right? So uh, the network, for example, and it runs it in reverse is what it does. The formula for it's all down here, but it runs it in reverse on the conversion and the, and the performance standards. How many people do I need to talk to to get here to a listing sold. And uh, this one isn't set up so that it automatically populates, but the one I'm about to show you is, and that's the one you wanna work with. And the same thing with the buyer conversion. So this handout actually walks you through everything you need to know on the prospecting side and setting up your business setting up your business, set up your goals, set up your objectives based on the budget, personal and business. And then we have the, the vital, and you'll see these all over, um, momentum and REMAX training, the 14 vital agent responsibilities, lead generation and lead conversion. When we come back up here, that's what this was. Yeah, lead conversion and lead generation. Lead conversion and lead generation, right? <clears throat> so when you're looking at this, this is our seven vital. Number one is finding somebody. That should be the focus. You're prospecting. Every time you leave your house, every time you leave the office, you're prospecting. If I, if I stop at HEB and I talk to three people, am I going to be able to convert them, right? Um, and then you have the other items that go with that as you're trying to, uh, to work on it. Then you have the same thing on the buyer side. And the number one on both of them is finding the people. You have to prospect. You have to prospect. And that's not sitting back watching TV or going into the office and sharing gossip. 
Like you'll find some offices, that's exactly what they do. Then you have the 47 vital listing activities. You have four sell by owners. This gives you the activities to generate this lead, lead generation right here, right? It's, it's right here. What are some of the things I can do to generate leads? Then you have the conversion. And if you'll take that handout and go through it a little bit, you'll see that uh, on the conversion, there may be some things in here that you don't want to do, and that's okay. There may be some things you want to tweak a little bit. That's okay. Whatever, make it yours. Make it yours. It's And if you need help with it, let us know. Right here on number 13, and you'll see it on both sides, this is 47 vital listing activities. You'll see the same thing on the buyer side. One of the best things you can do is send out a thank you card or a thank you note to everybody you talk to. And in fact, Tom Hopkins, who's a national trainer, motivational speaker and author, one of his books, one of his books is How to Master the Art of Selling. So you should send out five thank you cards per day, five thank you cards per day. And again, that's in Tom Hopkins, How to Master the Art of Selling. In addition to that, what you'll see is, um, and this comes from Carla Cross's book, 15 business cards per day, five thank you cards, 15 business cards. And it'll help build your business pretty quick. On the marketing and exposure aspect of it, door knocking, you don't have to door knock if you don't want to. Call 50 neighbors. We're talking about neighbors around a property you just listed or a property that just sold. And it doesn't have to be yours. It can be somebody else's. You know, an agent from another company sells a property in a subdivision you want to work, then you go out and door knock around that property that just sold and let them know that the property just sold. And oh, by the way, do you know anybody that might be interested in moving into this area or something of that effect? Um, like for example, when somebody got a new listing, that was always a good script to use. If somebody got a new listing in a subdivision you wanted to work, you can go out and door knock four um, 10 homes on each of the four sides, right? Which is 40 instead of the 50. But you're door knocking it, you're face to face with the majority of them. And you're, hey, I'm just knocking, I'm just coming by to say hi and, and let you know this property just came on the market. Do you know anybody that might be interested in moving into the area? No. Really? Wow. Uh, when's the last time you thought about moving? And see what you can get out of that. And there's scripts for that. And I have some of those if you need them to help you with that. You can get them from mikeferry.com or you can also get them from uh, zero to diamond.com or some really good scripts to work with. Anyway, so it goes all the way through from the prospecting down to the end. And you're always working, always working with your sphere of influence, uh, the neighbors, the just listed, just sold, open house cards, things of that nature should be going to your sphere of influence, not to the neighborhood. Like this says, Call 100 neighbors. I'm not going to call 100 neighbors, but I'll go knock on their door, right? Uh, there's systems where you can do that. Red X is one of them. Uh, Realtor Property Resource is another one. Realty Property Resource is another one. Door knocking the closest neighbors. Absolutely, right? 300 just sold cars. They're going to go to the sphere of influence not to the neighbors. Send them to the people that know you, like you, want to see you be successful. All right, so that was on the listing side, and then you have the same thing in this handout for the buyer side. So you go through, take a look at it. If you have any questions, let me know about it, and we'll do what we can to help you with that. And the other thing is decide what you want to do and how you're going to do it. If I wanted to send out, if I wanted to send out um, postcards, if I wanted to do that, how can I do it? And you have uh, in remax.net, there's a place in there where you can order postcards. Uh, you have Vista print, you have got print. There's, there's several different ways of doing that. That when I told you that website, I told you about breakthroughbroker.com. You can actually go there and 
print the stuff off yourself or you can go there and they'll print it for you. They'll print it and they'll mail it even for you. Uh, so there's a lot that you can do with it to make it work. Business planning, organizational model, you have the owner, you have a team leader, and then you have the breakdown. This is as you're looking at what you're doing, where do you want to be five years from now, 10 years from now? What are your goals? Build a business that you can sell. Some of you just getting started might want to be a broker later on, right? Build a business that you can sell to somebody else. That should be one of your goals, possibly. And again, that's not anything anybody talked to me about when I started. And I built a heck of a network in um, Austin. When I left Austin and come back to the Valley, I just gave everything away. And the manager, when I went to say the final goodbyes, he's like, hey, what did you do with all the, because I had six apartment complexes, all the details on every one of them. He's like, what did you do with this stuff that you built? I said, oh, I gave some to this person, some to that person. And I said, why? Why didn't you sell that? I don't know. I'm not a business person like, like that. I'm run up and down hills and kill me and destroy, but not business, right? So that's the reason I want to make sure you guys understand that and know how it, how it can work for you. You have, um, within Momentum, we have these classes available. And you can find them on Remax.net as well in their training sections. And we'll cover some of those. Any questions about anything we covered so far? Nope. All right. Hello, sir. Okay, so let me, let me do this then. You, you said uh, two websites earlier. Um, what, what were they? Vista print and got print. When we're talking about the printing? No, no, no. Before that. Um, um, breakthrough broker. Oh, Mike Ferry. Mike Ferry. Yeah, that, that one. That um, what is it? Sorry. Mike Ferry, F-E-R-R-Y. I'll just throw it in the chat for you. Okay. Thank you. And then the other one is uh, zero to diamond. The zero to diamond is Ricky Kruth. Um, he, he, both of these are gonna try to get you to become a part of their coaching program. You don't need to do that. Mike Ferry is one of the other, I bought two books in 97. One was Carla Cross's, one was Mike Ferry's how to earn a six figure income in real estate. Um, the training is really good but you don't need to hire them as a coach. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to, you do whatever you want to do, but you don't need that. And that's what they'll want you to do. So you can go into Mike Ferry and create an account real quick and download all their scripts. They have scripts in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, I believe. Um, you can download all their scripts and you can use those to help learn, learn what to say. There's one in there called the 40 Objection Handlers, which is absolutely fantastic. We use that in training ourselves. You'll, you'll see me use that in the classes. The, um, but when you go in there and create the account, if you did it right now before the sun sets, you'll get a phone call because <laughs> they're, they're, that's what they do, right? And they'll try to get you set up on a coaching program. I played with them for a while, uh, for about a three-month period where they were calling every other day. How's this going? How's that going? Great, great, great. When are you going to sign up? Uh, I don't know. Let me think about it. And after about three months, it's like, okay, look, enough's enough. I'm not doing this. Um, and that, but I did go spend a week with them up in uh, Dallas. In fact, with uh, um, Pips, Bill Pips, the one that was just on uh, uh, John Cheplak's, Cheplak's uh, videos last week. But anyway, um, both of those work really well and they both of them have really good scripts. They're two different types. Mike Ferries is in your face type prospecting, old hardcore prospecting. Right. And the zero diamond is more of the let's build a relationship type prospecting. So there's two different styles there. And I like the Mike Ferry one, but I can absolutely see the zero to diamond working today with relationships. All right. On the screen right now is a agent. It's called the agent planning calculator. 
I'm going to throw this in the chat for you as well, so you have a copy of it. And on here, this goes right in uh, with the handout that, that we just went through, right? So I don't need to go through all of this. It ties all of that in, all, everything all together with it. You identify your passions. You know, what do you want to be, do, have, right? And if you put the cursor over the little red box, it'll actually give you some of that information. Let's see if we can move these out a little bit. It'll give you the information for that. So the idea here is you plug in what it is you wanted to do and what it's going to cost to get there, et cetera, right? And that'll cover the life, aspira life aspirations. And then you have your personal budget. Same thing we had in the handout, only this is an, like an Excel, it is an Excel spreadsheet. So you can actually work through this. And because it's Excel, if you want to change the title, you can change the title, right? Make it something different. Um, like the one I have, the one I have uh, that I've shared for years with agents actually has a spot on here for uh, the wife's mad money, right? Because she has to have that. That's, that's part of it. Um, your business budget, what do you have on there? And these are all things that are business related. And you might have more than this. My business budget is broken down into uh, two sections. One is marketing. And then I have one whole section just on business itself. Your cell phones, your, your vehicles, uh, everything that goes with the mileage side or the business side of it. So when you're done with this, down here at the bottom, here's your total expenses. Your total business expenses that you're gonna need. So you come up here and here's your desired profit. And just as an example, and this is one of the, this is the tool that I found when I first came to Remax and I went, oh my gosh, because this is all done for you, right? Let's say if I wanted to profit $100,000, for example, and my expenses were gonna be uh, 25,000, just as an example. Average com commission rate was 2.5. Average sales price was 200. Then I'm going to need 25 transactions to get there. And there's our entrepreneur's mantra at the, at the bottom, right? So these are your numbers. Nobody else's. They're yours. And if you need help with it, let me know. We can work through it. But notice there's 25 transactions. So when I come over to the operational model, now I need to decide, am I gonna do listings or buyers? And like I said, in my case, it was listings was the focus. So you start plugging it in. If you needed listings today, where would you go get them at? Let's say expires would be a good place to start. For sale by owners would be a great place to start. Network is a great place to start. And farming is a great place to start. Other items that you see on here, like websites, um, ad calls, sign calls, are they gonna happen? Yes. But do you have control over that? And Initially, I would say no. You'll learn, you'll learn what works and what doesn't. Um, but if I needed to generate something today, the four that I have marked would generate that pretty quick like. Right? So I'm going to focus just on the listing side. So when we go to the next tab, let me show you something. So on the buyers, you notice I don't have anything on the buyers here, right? Nothing in the buyer blanks. So if I go to the buyers tab, up here at the top, you see how it's all darkened in? It's all darkened in. If I go to the listing side, you see some of this is open. And what has happened is um, the, the fields that we said we were going to get our contracts from on the listing side are now open for us to put the calculations in. 
So this is a part of that tool. This is absolutely phenomenal because if I come down to the bottom, let's take expireds, for example. Down here at the bottom, you see where it has 50, 67, and 90 sales percentage. You're going to start out with 50 as a new agent, and then your goal would be to, to build up. So the first three are 50. So I'm going to hit 50. Oops. Uh, 50. That was seven. What was the last one? 15. 15. And you, these, the one I sent you should not have anything in there. If it does, just you can change it. Um, how many months are you going to work? How many weeks out of the year are you going to work? How many days out of the week are you going to work? So what this says is on expireds for me to hit my five sold properties, five sold properties on expireds, I'm going to have to have um, on a daily basis, I'm going to need to attempt to talk to 12 expireds. Jessica, do you have a question? Sorry, I didn't see that. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, okay. The only thing that I find hard to do is that if there's an owner that wants to sell the house and I come to, to him and I say, hey, let me sell your house um, for a 6%. And he says like, that will be awesome. But there's this other broker that charges me only the 4% or the 3%. How can I compete with that? Um, because I know here in the Bali, there are brokers that are doing that like, I'll, I'll sell your house for the 4% or for the 3%. Don't, over, don't overpay. So that, that is what I think that it's the, the most hard thing to do, like getting them to yeah. accept your rate, like the REMAX rate, because I, I do think that it's a 6%. How can I get them to choose me um, instead of choosing the other people? Because it's their money and... I mean, obviously they want to earn more. <laughs> so right. I, I'd like to, to get like um, useful, useful advice for that. Mm, I don't know if you can say like something <laughs> that can help me with that. Sure. First, first let's do this. Uh, when you're talking about commission, there is no set commission. So, so there is no, uh, Remax doesn't set it. Norman and Elsa doesn't set it. We don't set it, right? There's no set commission. It can be whatever we want it to be. When, you, when you're when uh, you talking to a seller about, and they say something like that, just like you were just talking about where, well, if I list with such and such, they'll do it for 4%. If you'll go to that mikeferry.com and, and download some of those scripts, he has stuff in there for that. Like for example, if you were to say that to me, based on, because I've used the Mike Ferry scripts, my response it usually starts off with, will you lower your commission? And the answer is no. Just say no and shut up. Where we make a mistake is we sometimes want to say no and explain why. You don't need to. Let In sales, the first person to speak is, is, is the one that's going to lose, right? So uh, when they say, Mac, will you lower your commission? I go... <laughs> No, I'm sorry, I won't. Or just no. And just sit there and let them respond. Um, and if they come back with uh, the same thing you're talking about, but you know, I talked to uh, John Smith over here and he he'll do it for 4%. Why can't you? And if you learn the scripts, the script is, for example, I talked to John Smith over here, he'll do it for 4%. Why won't you? I don't know what they do or how they do business, but it really does concern me that they would, they're willing to drop their price as your agent. Um, and they weren't able to negotiate a better price for themselves. If they weren't able to negotiate their commission better, I don't think they'd be able to negotiate a better price for your property. I can. I will. All I need you to do is initial here so we can go ahead and get started.
and you just can continue to work with it. Those, the scripts they have in there are really good. Um, and they also have, they also have, um, they also have videos that, that go with that. You can go to YouTube and pull up Mike Ferry's videos on some of that. And the same thing with, uh, Ricky Kruth, same thing as Ricky Kruth. But learning, learning the scripts is a help. Yes, Jessica. Yeah, that was really helpful. <laughs> you need you need to value your work, right? Like right. give yes. that confidence to the clients. Yeah, and as you as you learn more, so the class you guys took took or are taking to get your license is just that. It's to cover your backside, right? In all honesty. Um, it's not gonna put any money in your pocket. The stuff that we are we are doing, it'll put money in your pocket if you'll actually take it and use it. But it doesn't stop here. Uh, one of the classes we took years ago, it was a certified residential specialist. So when I go into a house and I sit down, one of the techniques I learned was uh, I sit down at the table. And I go, Mr. And Ms. Seller, before we get started, I'd like to share something with you. When we're done today, one of three things are going to happen. You're going to look at me and go, Mac, we want you to be our, uh, we want you to be our agent. And that's okay. Or you might look at me and go, you know, Mac, we're sorry. We're not going to listen with you. That's okay too. Or Mr. Seller, I might look at you and go, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And that's okay too. And the reason for that is because when you go in there, they, they think they're in charge, right? And you're going to do whatever you, they tell, tell you to do. It's not going to happen. Uh, so we want to be structured in such a way that when we go in there, we're confident, we know what we're doing, and we go in to get the listing. If we go in there and they say, if we've asked the right questions, and we'll talk about this in some of the other classes, but if we've asked the right questions, like for a seller, why are you selling out? soon do you need it sold by? And oh, by the way, what do you think your property's worth in today's market? If I've asked those questions, I build my CMA to go with those, when I get in there and I sit down and I talk to them and I give them that information I just gave you and we start going through it at the end, if they say, I, I tell them, you said you wanted this and I've shown you where your property is only worth this amount and you can see that. So where within this range here, would you like to list it? And they go, Oh, we don't care. We still want this. That gives you the opportunity to go, okay, well, that, that's nice, but I'm not going to be able to work with you. So I wish you the best. And the reaction you get from them is absolutely amazing. I had, I had a guy here in Harlan's and tell me, you have to list my property. No, I don't have to list your property. Right? And you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to work with them. So, and we'll, we'll work on that as we go through this. If you need anything with it, we'll, uh, we'll get where we need to be. On this sheet on this sheet. So you need to decide how you're going to do the business. Um, if you don't, again, if you don't want to knock on doors, that's fine. If you don't want to make phone calls, that's fine. But you've got to do something for prospect. You have to do something for prospect. Uh, I happen to be one of those individuals. I love expired and for sell by owners. Absolutely love them because they already want to sell, right? Doesn't make them easy because they will slam the door in your face in a minute. I'm telling you <laughs> Among other things. Um, but like right here, so this says expired 12.7. This is a day. I need to talk to or attempt to talk to 12.7 people a day on expires. And, and quite frankly, today that might be a little tough because there's not that many expires. But we used to send out, I did the phone calls, I did the door, door knocking, and I eventually got into doing mail outs. Right? And I would do mail outs every morning and usually around 15 to 20 of them a day, at least, um, going out to expires. Because you want to hit the ones that just expired, but you also want to look at the ones that expired three months ago or six months ago. You want, you want to keep them in your system, right? And we used to do a three-day mail out. We'd mail something out, three days later, we'd mail something else. And three days later, we'd mail another item out. If you want to get into that, just let me know. We'll talk about it. Work on it. All right, I have one more item I want to show you. Give you a chance to, uh, and I've thrown all these in the chat for you, so you have a chance to play with them. And 
get comfortable with them. But this next item is the conversion tracking log. So give me just a second to get it open and set up here. Little more difficult there. So again, this is another Excel spreadsheet, and it's from Momentum. It's from Zip uh, from uh, Remax. This is a conversion tracking. So you need to track what you do. Excuse me. If I talk to somebody today about real estate, I need to keep up with them. And there's different ways of doing that. You can do it within your system. If you have a contact management system like Booj, for example, we can put their name in there and do all that. But this allows you to see what's actually going on real quick at a glance. So I throw the client's name in here, their phone number, are they buying or selling? Um, when did I actually talk to them? Where did I meet them at? All that stuff goes in here and it helps me track what I have going on. And then, so I would end up with something like this, right? It shows that I worked, a, I talked to a for sale by owner um, or I attempted to talk to them, didn't actually talk to them, didn't set anything up. Network, I got something on social media where I actually talked to somebody and I was able to set something up. Here's another one where internet, it was a card uh, generated where they can't, they contacted us, had an opportunity to talk to them and go from there, right? So then on that, it allows us to come back here to the conversion side of it and see what's working on the conversion side. And you can plug in your numbers and plug in your num numbers as far as attempts and what you what you have going on with it and track it for the year for the different activities if that's something you want to do and that's that's one of the things that um, kind of takes away from our contact management system but yet adds so much to our activity management um, which is an area that we lose from time to time. Any questions about what we've covered? So for those that, go ahead. Go ahead, Jessica. Okay. No, I said I'm okay. <laughs> okay. So so one of the one of the key things in getting started is what is it you want to do? residential, I mean, uh, uh, listings or buyers, what are your goals five years from now? Where do you wanna be? And then put together a, uh, a plan. How are you gonna get there? One of the things to help with that, let me see if I can get this thing open up here real quick. If I can get this open, I'll show it to you. All right, so one of the things to help you get started with this, I'll just show you this one real quick, is identifying what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? So what is your goals? What's your mission? How do you plan on doing things? And I'll show this to you real quick. This is our mission statement. So this is what the our business has been based on. Learn as much as you can so you can help as much as you can. And on the 
real estate side, on the real estate side, it was learn as much as we can so we can help as much as we can for our clients, help them get where they want to be, what do they want to do, whether it's first time home buyer or whether it's the or whether it's the uh, investor who's bought 15 homes, how can I help them? And obviously one of the things there was to learn as much as you can so that you can do that. So if you have a mission statement, you know what you're trying to accomplish, it makes things a little easier to stay focused on what you've got going on. So your mission, your goals, your budget, and putting your business plan together is critical to making it work. Any questions or comments? Oh, all right. So one of the bad things about this business is you are on your own. Unless you ask for help, or in this company, occasionally, um, Norma or myself might jump in and say, hey, you haven't been coming to training, or you haven't written a contract in a few days. What's going on? You know, um, but if you need something, reach out to somebody. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we're here for. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you guys need anything, just give us a yell. <laughs>